it's um it's really sort of amazing when I sort of um, examine self-examine uh, why we do what we do uh, right and so um, I'm not normally one who um, does videos or um, does this sort of stuff actually you know to put myself on a video and then put myself up on a channel to say look at me this is what I have to say this is what I experience because you already know at least I did as a child you're as a player of the integrator you're recording your experiences so that's the record the records already there and what that means actually is that and this is true you don't have to experience what I've experienced from what I've learned that is a record in order for others to have access to that record without me putting what I've experienced, which represents that experience that I've learned from, which is a record, up onto this video so that others, right, others that see it and experience what they're experiencing on this video, if they see it, they're experiencing the codes, okay, which are holographic codes or, if you will, mathematical codes that, that they're translating when they visually see the mathematical code translations on here. But you don't have to experience those codes being delivered to you after they've been experienced by me, which means they've already been recorded on the morphogenetic field structure, which means in the field, which means it's out there. That's why Robin ben Benfield made a very perceptive remark, a friend of mine, when she said that I have the ability to access everything that's being experienced that represents, if you will, a record because it's already happened. That means that's, that's like having access to the library as it's being circulated through the bioplasma, the molten voltage. I call it the artery in the veins of planet Earth, water, right? The lifeblood of planet Earth, water vapor, the ether, Right. And so this is <laughs> I was sort of known when I was a child as being very shy. I, I was always very shy, which was um, another word might be now here we get into the re like going back reserved. Um, because you're mostly um, in mostly what you call observer state, uh, observing what we're experiencing as above, so below. You're really in high-powered learning mode. So you're listening. The waves, the music. And so that's one of the reasons why, for example, when, when I do a measurement, and, and, and as a child, I'm running to Mama, the great living spirit of Mother Earth. And why is that? Because nature is music. Plants are music. Trees are music. Okay, which are the waves. So what that means is, is that you naturally, with me, I naturally gravitated to experience in spirit the girls' music. Because I love girls that play music. Okay. That's why I love to hear girls' voices. They're higher octave. Oh. It just consumes you like the fragrance of a flower does. Right? So when you're naturally drawn to the goddess side that's playing such beautiful music that's in peace, love, harmony, and balance. You're experiencing the love she has for music. You're experiencing the love in her, okay? Her heart, if you will, that we experience in our heart. So our hearts are together with her heart and soul, okay? Because you're experiencing the love she has for music where her waves are in harmony. So your waves, my waves, are in harmony with the girls' waves. So now I'm tuned in to the girls' harmonics. See, in living spirit, which means my spirit and her spirit are playing music together. Okay, so that means that, it, that as being androgynous, which is like a father and a mother joined in as one in living spirit, which is aloha, is joined in living spirit with an oversoul with mama earth. 
So that means you're able to, to maintain the balance, the center point of a sphere, the center point of spheres, the three sphere logo, you're in harmony with our waves, which is the Trinity. One and three, three and one. You're in balance between both the poles, between the negative and the positive mag magnetic poles, right? Now you're one. Now you're experiencing love for the planet, which is your love for Mother Earth, who's playing that music, right? So now what happens is we, we measure the differential torque speed between those that are and those that aren't and balance with her music, the music she plays. See how the torque speed differential works between those that are in balance, between complex number of space, between negative and positive numbers. As Tim Refat, you know, uh, ended up getting, as he calls it, the keys to the kingdom, the male dominates, right, of Colin Bloy, who was, what was he, the uh, Magi for the Rothschild family, right? So he put on a number of classes to, to show you how the basic complex number space works, how vampire service, he's even got a website up about vampire services. See, so, so they harvest energy off of us and then use that energy to make themselves more powerful because they live through the perception of power, which is money, which is energy, which is numbers. See, so he explains how all this works, right? He always used to get a kick out of saying the love and light folks. See, so, so he knows how the math works because he's a physicist and a math. And so he's very good at sort of pointing out the basics, right? So he knows who's got more energy to bear to bring to solving the problem because he knows love is a law. Love is a vibration. He explains it a little bit differently, but love is a vibration. So when you are what love is, that means you're in love with who you are. Okay, which means you don't need any energy from anybody. That's the rub on Tim Refat. We don't need any energy there, Tim. Okay. Uh, which means you're less powerful because you're needing energy off of others in order to make yourselves more powerful. That means your mind is inverted. So Tim Refat's mind is inverted. His energy is inverted. That's why he talked about what we're in the AI. See? So his perception of power is through the machine side, the dead light side. See? Because without us, he doesn't exist. That's the truth of it. He knows that. See? So he, he showed how putting pictures up there of images of real people, right? And, and the purpose for which he does that. Uh, but we got bigger engines. So anyway, I thought I'd share that because um, these are things that I feel very deeply about. It's, it's one of the reasons why I've mentioned this before, but it's true. That when I was a child, my father, for example, explained to me the importance of the value. Now we're back to value, value tagging, like they want to put numbers as tags, value tags. This is what it's going to cost you in energy because energy are numbers if you want this. Okay, so it's a material form. It's, a ma it's in matter state form. So then you'd say, okay, do I need all these things that are on all these shelves with these price tags that I got to go now go out and earn? those energy numbers by going to work, using my energy to go to work for somebody else that I'm going to get paid so that I can go get that stuff. Right. And now you accumulate all this stuff and that becomes baggage. That's like an engine, the engine of a freight train that's now going to add on a car, which is adding on mass, M state mass. So you keep adding on baggage cars, like a grain car, right? a cattle car, a flatbed, and you got all these little freight, you got all these little cars, box cars, box cars. Remember box cars, 12, 12 strand DNA, box cars. So now you got all the box cars and the engines pulling all these box cars. And if you've ever looked at the story, what happened, because I grew up in Southern California where there was a train that was coming down, okay, the Cajon Pass, which would be coming up off the Mojave Desert, and then it's going to come down Cajon Pass. Now, I know from a fire, wildland firefighter's point of view, 
we used to have to go and fight a lot of fires up through Cajon Pass because it's a lot of dry brush in the summertime there where you go up into the Angeles and the San Bernardino National Forest where they sort of get cut between the two. And a lot of fires used to get ignited there because of the, the, the steel, steel wheels against steel rails because so much weight, which is so much mass, is going downhill, right? So now we're into the resistance game between that much flow of that much energy with that much mass is wanting to really go. And so is having to hold back that much weight.